So a couple years back, I casually played Clash of Clans with my friends. We were super competitive about what level your wizard tower was, or what material your walls were made out of. But one day we found out one of our friends was a cheater. Instead of waiting the days it took to unlock these features, he was paying for them. This gave him a clear, unfair advantage, and sparked a legitimate grudge between us. Microtransactions like this have been growing in developer popularity for years now. For one, it allows apps to be free for the user to download. This brings in more users, more eyes on advertisements, and more of an opportunity for these smaller payments. The practice in apps has generally been accepted by the public, but not so much when it comes to console-based games. This is the most downvoted comment in Reddit history. It's the Electronic Arts defense of making certain characters, like Darth Vader, unlockable in Star Wars Battlefront 2. And Darth Vader is one badass character with obviously superior abilities. So while most players in the community were putting in hours of gameplay working toward the achievement, others were buying it for $80. Developers are profiting off this strategy, but at a PR cost. Many consumers are fed up. It's reaching a boiling point. So let's get to the root of it. How did we get here? What started this mess? And where does it go from here? We can trace it all back to the late 1990s and DLC, or downloadable content. These fan-made modifications for retail games often included characters, outfits, and maps. 1997 is the first year we saw video game developers first introduce DLC. War strategy game Total Annihilation offered its users downloadable maps and scenarios. The practice continued with the introduction of Xbox, PlayStation 2, and GameCube. But let's be clear, so far, DLC has all been free. That is until 2006 and the release of Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion by Bethesda Softworks Games. So what was this content that developers wanted its users to pay for for the first time in gaming history? Horse armor. Players could spend $2.50 worth of Xbox Live points to decorate their steed in armor. Downloads like this cost money, but they were strictly aesthetic. And since it was an offline game, there were no players to compete against. Console game developers weren't quick to copy, but app developers were. This is where my experience with Clash of Clans came in. But the game definitely was not alone. Almost all free-to-play apps rely on in-game microtransactions. Candy Crush Saga by King is the most downloaded game app of all time, and they make a killing selling you new lives, extra moves, and new levels, a major part of their 1.5 billion annual revenue. On one hand, free-to-play apps allow people from all economic backgrounds to download and play a version of the game, but on the other hand, spending becomes more necessary and more enticing the further along a player gets. Since the infamous horse armor affair, many developers have included in-game microtransactions for mostly cosmetic upgrades, like outfits and weapons. Some players of Counter-Strike Global Offensive even pay $400 for a knife. But still, most gamers are okay with this considering it does not give you an actual edge. The problem arises when developers give you the option to pay to win. And this is essentially what EA did when they released Battlefront 2 in 2017. The uproar was intense and caused EA to shut down all microtransactions. And in March of 2018, EA unlocked all characters for free. This was the first major win for gamers in the battle over microtransactions. But developers will continue to include them as long as people are willing to pay for them. In total, microtransactions are estimated to make $5 billion for the industry per year. EA alone made $1.2 billion in revenue from selling add-ons in 2017. So, what's the bigger picture? For gamers, it's frustrating, but it may be worse than that. DLC and microtransactions may stifle development for future games. Developers can simply tack on add-ons that make more money for the company without the larger investment in new titles. But does this really work for developers either? Call of Duty Infinite Warfare had underwhelming sales, and that may be because Call of Duty fans were still playing Black Ops 3. So, is this something developers will continue to practice? What's the future of gaming look like? Thanks for watching. We'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe.